to die. Yes. Whoo. We want more, Lord. We want more. Thank you, Master. Would you turn to Acts 19, please? How many of y'all here believe you've been called? I didn't mean phone call. You know, you've been called by God. Amen? Then you know, if you've been called by God, then you know that you, there's a cooperation that we all must continue to do. So if we know we've been called by God, then there must be a place where we are positioned as a steadfast calling. We are in us, we should be in a steadfast. So we should be steadfast to the calling. Amen? Unwavering, unmovable. In Acts 19, in verse 11, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even when handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, the diseases left them, and, does every, and evil spirits went out of them. Then some of, the, uh, some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. I mean, that's pretty stupid. You know? They're trying to exorcise something that they don't have. See, there's something that Paul carried. He carried the marks of Christ. He carried the likeness of Christ. He was consistent in his calling, no wavering, no moving, no compromising. He had a steadfast calling that he knew that he had to complete and fulfill. See, you can't do that if you're not, if you're not grateful. You, if you're not grateful, you won't. You'll compromise, you'll justify, and you'll blame. You won't be consistent. You won't reach a level of obedience and submission. You just won't do it. You'll become religious. And just because you know the word, you're okay. Because you show up at church once in a while, you're okay. Because you serve, you're okay. No, that's what Jesus said. Many of you will come before me and say this, 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 and this. And I'll say, I don't know them. Why? Because they didn't carry his likeness. And so some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits and saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? You got to ask yourself this. Is that what demons are going to say about you? They're going to say, I, I know you and I know Jesus, but I don't know you. In other words, if you're not carrying a likeness, and we talked about this, they will not submit. They only submit to Jesus. Then a man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled. 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Why? Paul was maintaining a steadfast calling. 
He maintained the likeness of Christ. There's something that he did. He, he reached the level of perfection in surrender, obedience, and consistency. I'm going to say that again. There's a, a level of perfection. There's a level that God requires of surrender, obedience, and consistency. Surrender, obedience, and consistency. Steadfast calling. First Peter chapter 5. To maintain a steadfast calling, you must maintain a divine order. There must be divine priorities all the time. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, and it says, Be sober, which means be alert, be vigilant, be consistent. Because the adversary of the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may deceive. Amen? Devour. He can't devour you unless he first deceives you. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered, in other words, <laughs> after you have gone through trials and testings, challenges, after you suffered, that what may happen. Amen? Resist him steadfast in the faith. Why? Because in, <laughs> we're all going through it. Amen? There isn't a person that's not going to be tested or challenged or go through a trial. So in this, what's he trying to do? He's trying to bring us to a place that after we have suffered, that we are perfect. Everyone say perfect. In other words, there's a level he's trying to, that he's trying to get us to reach. That we are perfected, we're established, we're strengthened, and we're settled. In other words, immovable. Immovable. So there's got to be a place where the devil's going to seek compromise. He's going to seek to try and manipulate us with compromising. Amen. He's going to bring challenges and testings. And God's going to allow us until a level of surrender, obedience, and consistency is obtained. What's the three things? Surrender, obedience, and what? Consistency. They must be achieved. Now, this doesn't mean, see, so many people think that, well, I'm consistent. Or I'm obedient. Or, in other words, does he have to ask you more than once? See, he wants us to reach a place of first-time obedience, consistency, no compromising, not putting anything in the way of what we're to do. Remember, we are in a full-blown training session. It doesn't stop right now. We haven't seen what's getting ready to happen, but the Spirit does. And many people are going to be shaken to where they can't, they're, they're going to lose it because of their inconsistency, worldliness, and materialism. They won't make it. Don't go back in fear, anxiety, stress, worry. Don't go back in the ways of the character of the world. But God is saying we've got to reach and achieve this level so that we must maintain a steadfast calling. You know, we have a call, a purpose, and destiny that we must fulfill. But remember, if it's not done according to the ways of the Lord, <laughs> then it's not accounted for anything. In Psalm 15. Never set your relationship with service. Relationship is relationship, not service. Amen? Why well, do this and I do that? That's got, it's irrelevant. 
we should all be doing what we're supposed to be doing. But never make that as associated with your relationship. Your conduct will determine the relationship. If your conduct is likeness of him, then there's relationship. In Psalm 15, verse 1, is everybody there? Oh, happy days. You know, there's so much going on in the world, and there's so much pressure and hard, you know, hard pressing all over and so many things that are happening that we're being squeezed. The body of Christ is being squeezed. The body of Christ is being tested. Why? Because Christ is trying to express himself through the body. He's trying to get everybody to cooperate. Verse 1, let's speak it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell on your holy hill? He who walks uprightly, works righteousness, speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue or compromise, nor does he does evil to his neighbor, does not take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, and he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not what? He's, why, he's, con, he's consistent. It's what's consistent? His conduct, his attitude, his motive, his desires. He's consistent in maintaining the likeness of Christ. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take up a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be what? Moved. Steadfast conduct, attitude, motive, surrendering, obedience and consistency. A position of no change. The word says Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we should be the same way. Amen? We should carry the likeness of Christ and avoid anything that would try to complicate or contaminate that character. No change from the likeness of Christ. We are in a steadfast call, purpose, and destiny. No wavering so we cannot be moved. We must be stubborn. Everyone would say stubborn. In the spirit. <laughs> stubborn in the spirit. And this can only be established by the presence of God. There's a lot of people that are stubborn, but they're stubborn everywhere else but in the Spirit. Hebrews 13. Stubborn in the Spirit. In other words, you're not going to take no garbage. You're going to stay in the Spirit, and you're going to fight. In verse 5. Let's speak it. Let your conduct be without what? Covetousness. Be content with such thing as you have. Don't be a whiner or a wanderer all the time. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow consi considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the what? Same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Do not be carried about with various strange doctrines. For it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have, no pro have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burnt outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, he that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to what? To come. Our conduct, again, must be without covetousness, 
or neediness. In other words, we got to stop always asking for our own needs. How many of y'all know God says he, you, he knows what you need? Amen? People just don't give God a break. Why can't we just trust? Lord, you know what I need. Thank you for it. It's coming. Amen? Because in that, it's not steadfast calling. Where is the relationship? Our conduct is to reach and express the likeness of Christ. The presence is stolen from us. God's presence is stolen when denial of self is not maintained. The enemy will drain you and it will steal the presence of God. Not that God can be stolen, but we are drained then. Amen? When we can't deny ourselves. Remember, Jesus gave us a formula, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. And Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, verse 21. Steadfast calling. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Verse 21. My son, fear the Lord and the what? And the king. And do not associate with those given to what? Change. Unstable. Up and downers. Not maintaining the likeness of Christ. For their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring. In other words, many have been given to change of direction, conduct, desires, choices, not able to be steadfast to the call. They are unstable. They're talkers and not walkers. In Hebrews 3. Why? Because this is the last days. This is where we're at. Many will fall from the faith, taking heed to carnality, selfishness, self-centeredness, not able to deny themselves. Hebrews 3, verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin or the presence of evil. For we have become partakers of Christ. That means Christ, the anointing in his likenessness. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. You know, one of the most important things for me and you as a believer is to hear God's voice and to be led by his spirit. You know, again, that's that area where you are in relationship with him in his presence. You are seeking him every day and you're acknowledging him in everything. So that you are being led by the Spirit of God. Rebellion is lack of steadfastness. Why? Due to denying, can't deny enough self. So when you can't deny yourself, you're in a rebellious state. Instead of all about Jesus, it's all about me. And First Peter chapter 1.
Some people like to live a life of excuses because they can't face true reality. And that's where the Lord says that many in the last days will be lovers of themselves. Amen. Lovers of money, boasters. We're dealing with it all over. Now, if they're carrying those spirits, that means a lot of spirits of those are around. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. First Pete, verse 1. Uh, First Pete, chapter 1, verse 13, sorry. Verse 13, what does it say? Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind or your thoughts. In other words... Protect and monitor your thoughts of influence. Because if you won't, you'll drift. You'll compromise. Be sober. Which means what? Alert. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as what? Obedient. Children, not conforming yourselves to the former losses in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ is of the Lamb, without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your soul's in what? Obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flowers falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which by the gospel was preached to you. Hallelujah. Again, we've got to get to that place where we protect and monitor our thoughts of influence, maintaining a call, purpose, and destiny through a level of surrender, obedience, and consistency. And of course, in the continuance of denying of ourselves in the presence of God. Amen. In Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verse 7 and 8. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. See, this is where the enemy wants to compromise us by not setting the Lord before us. People make so many decisions and do so many things without acknowledging the Lord. And they fall into a place of assumption. Set the Lord before us and we won't be moved. <laughs> Amen. We'll be steadfast to the calling, no matter what. The only reason why people do make stupid mistakes is because they ain't set the Lord before them. Or they've allowed the enemy to drain them of God's presence. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Steadfast calling. Are you steadfast at your calling, purpose, and destiny? Have we reached that level of 
surrender, obedience, and consistency. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of loss like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but to in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man but God who is also giving us his holy spirit sanctification in his presence not as a man pleaser but as god pleasers not as self pleasers or money pleasers but as god pleasers again we must remember that jesus is the same yesterday and tomorrow you and i must maintain the same no matter what comes across our path no matter what trial circumstance no matter what accidents no matter what events no matter what traumas we stay the same Amen? We stay the same. What are we doing? We maintain in His likeness. In Romans 1. In many areas, by the enemy, challenged, tempted to compromise, to change, to exchange. <laughs> Exchange in the likeness of Christ. Romans 1 verse 18. Let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruption, corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever." They exchanged a calling with corruptible things of self, selfishness, and worldliness, materialism. Look at how many places, how many individuals have sold their souls out for materialism. Amen? See, they exchanged their calling of God, and they changed. Does everybody understand that? They, anything that you and I are exchanging, the enemy's always trying to take something and exchange it to remove the character of Christ and put in his character. So all kinds of things are going to be happening. We are in a time right now where explosive things are going on. There's emotional things. There's all kinds of things that are happening. There's all kinds of trauma. There's chaos. There's floodings. There's climate. There's all kinds of things. There are rumors, plenty of rumors of wars, plenty of rumors of disasters. Oh, there's going to be a food shortage. There's going to be a gas shortage. Look at how many times they've emptied out the grocery stores when nothing happened. Amen. <laughs> I mean, we're to be ready in season and out. 
but not over-exaggerated because we trust God. He's our hope and strength in our life. He's our everything. We maintain God's presence in his likeness. And there isn't, listen, if you got him, you got everything. <laughs> there should be no worry, no concern, no fear. Amen? Colossians 1. How many of y'all know you're going to be challenged tomorrow? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, say it. I love suffering. <laughs> Some of you are too wimpy still to say it, yeah, but it's okay. You'll get there. <laughs> Glory. Colossians 1.19. <laughs> let's speak it please for it pleased the father that in him Jesus all the fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of his cross and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind in your thoughts by wicked works yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel or the truth which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. I now rejoice in my sufferings. Even Paul rejoiced in his sufferings. For you... And fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known that what was the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Steadfast, not moved from the training of your calling. Amen. And we're going to close at Hebrews 13. Hebrew 13. Glory. In verse 20. Twenty and twenty one. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you what? Complete. Everyone say complete. And every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen steadfast calling, maintaining his likeness. Amen. We have to reach a level of what? Surrender. What else? Obedience and consistency. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Seal the seeds. Seal this tonight, Lord. And help us monitor our thoughts, keeping you constantly before us and not compromising but denying ourselves in every area, maintaining your presence, your joy, and your strength in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.